Well, good morning, team. Chemistry coach coming at you. We are looking at rate laws today. So in the realm of kinetics, this is kind of what you would call the meat and potatoes. Our goal, really, if you're a kineticist, is to figure out, hey, here's some reaction. What's its rate law? And I'm going to go through all the different components of a rate law. But once we have the rate law down, we can do a lot of predictive work from that and a lot of calculations. It's fantastic. So that's kind of our driving point. What's the rate law? So let's take a look at it. Right? We've looked at reaction rates at this point and how we could determine those from plots and uh, from laboratory data, yada, yada, yada. Okay, that's fine. But how do we relate this to other factors? Okay, so what's the rate law? Again, it's an equation, so we're looking, we're, always, we're a chemist, we're always looking for math equations. We want math, we love math with units, of course, and tracking uncertainty, right? <laughs> so what we're looking at is something that takes these reaction rates, right? Some equation that relates the reaction rate, which we've looked at, right? to the reactant concentrations, right? Those are easy to measure in a lab, right? Usually it's just written on a bottle for you, but if you have to standardize it, whatever, pretty easy to figure out the concentrations of reactants, right? At least initially before a reaction starts. Once a reaction starts going, that's a whole nother ball game, but doable. Uh, reaction rates, we looked in the last couple of videos how we could determine those. So now how can we relate those together with an equation? That's called your rate law, right? So let's just take a generic look, nothing specific at this point. We'll do a specific reaction later in an example. But let's say we got some generic equation, right? So we got species A, B, C, and D. Those are the capital letters with stoichiometric coefficients, little a, little b, little c, little d, right? We got to balance that equation, right? So let's say we have this equation. You'll always write the rate law in general. Right? The rate law will be the overall reaction rate. That's the capital R. You know what that is. And I'll define all these things on the next board. I'll write them all up. Is some constant K, right? a proportionality constant there, times the concentration of reactant A raised to the power of some factor, usually an integer. And we'll call that M for now. Right? Right? You could call it P or Q or X or whatever you want. Let's just call it M in this scenario times the concentration of species B, reactant B, also raised to some factor, some integer. We'll call that N, right? M and N. Sometimes you'll see X and Y there. I mean, I guess you could do P and Q. You could do whatever you want, but usually X and Y or M and N are the, the factors that you'll see. Um, now, we're not going to put A and B there because they are not M, right? What we're raising the concentration of reactant A to is not necessarily equal to the balanced coefficient, right? The stoichiometric coefficient for the balanced equation. So I'm not going to put a little a there, right? So theoretically, you just can't put the stoichiometric coefficient. It could be. It's possible, but not necessarily. So I cannot write a there, right? So I'm going to do some other uh, integer there, m. And again, what we raise the uh, concentration of b to, we're going to call n, because it's not necessarily going to be the stoichiometric coefficient for the balanced equation. B. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this rate law on the next board and go through every component of that for you. All right, so I rewrote the general equation up there, <clears throat> rewrote this generic rate law. And of course, it's specific to each particular reaction that we're looking at. But let's break everything down. All right, we already know what capital R is. That's the reaction rate. We know how we can determine that in lab. <clears throat> K, again, that's a proportionality constant allows us to put the equal sign there, and that's called the rate constant. Rate constant makes a lot of sense. This is also a driving force to determine in a laboratory. So I remember working on my PhD, there were some groups in a room down the hallway on the same floor in Roland Hall over at UCI when I was at Zot Zot getting my PhD over there. Is that the Zot? What's, is that the Zot or is that the anteater thingy? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> one of their main focuses, foci, fo okay, so I'm not an English major, obviously, was to determine rate constants for different atmospheric reactions. So it was kind of neat. Uh, and we'll find out once we got that rate constant, life looks pretty good for us. Uh, and again, it depends on the reaction. Those units are going to vary, obviously, based on the rate and the, the unit, the concentrations uh, for the uh, the units for the concentrations, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll come back to rate constant in a little bit. Uh, so again, the brackets mean concentration of, so A and B, that's going to be the concentration of reactant A, 
concentration of reactant B. Now, obviously, molarity is usually the most common one for solutions, but it could be pressures for gases, molecules per second. I mean, whatever, whatever the units are for those concentrations. doesn't really matter at this point. And again, uh, M and N. So M is the order with respect to reactant A, and N is the order with respect to to reactant B, and those are going to be integers, at least at this level, right? Those are, so just assume they're going to be integers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. You'll rarely see them greater than 2, <laughs> okay? Possible, but very rare. Uh, those are based on experiment only, like I mentioned before, not the coefficients, okay? So N and M are not going to necessarily be the coefficients. They could be! But we have to do them and uh, experimentally. We have to determine those experimentally. And if it happens to be the same as the stoichiometric coefficient, that's a coinky dink, right? Uh, so we call that the order with respect to reactant A or the order with respect to reactant B. So it could be zero with order first order, second order, yada, yada. We'll do a generic example on the next board here. But usually what we're after is the overall reactant reaction order, not just with respect to A or with respect to B, or if there's three reactants, C, right? We want to know the overall reaction order, right? So what's that? So you'll hear in kinetics all the time, what's the order of that reaction? Is that a first order reaction? Is that a second order reaction? Is that a third order reaction? Is that a zero order reaction? And from and once we know the order of a reaction, we can we can we find some sim similarities between all first order reactions and all second order reactions uh, that we're going to get into some details later when we get to integrated rate laws. Oh, it grows. Uh, so all you do is take the order with respect to each reactant. And in this case, if it's just M and M, M it's hard not to say M and M. <laughs> it's M and N. Add those together, right? So if M is one and N is one, one plus one is two. That'd be a second order reaction overall. So let's do a generic uh, example on the next board here. All right, for example, we're really simplifying things here. Let's say we have that generic reaction again. And let's say in some experiments, maybe you do these in lab, maybe you're provided this experimental data and you can determine these, or maybe you're just given this like I do here, whatever you're provided, right? So let's say the order with respect to reactant A is 1, meaning it's first order with respect to A, or first order in A. And let's say the order with respect to reactant B is 0, so 0th order in B, or with respect to B. So I just gave them to you, but like I said, if we were provided some of the data like we did in one of the earlier videos, um, well, that would be for the rate, so uh, I haven't shown you how to determine these yet. Oh, <laughs> maybe that'll be the next video. Oh, how do we determine these orders with respect to each reactant, right? So we got to be able to figure that out. Remember, they're done experimentally. They're not necessarily equal to the coefficients. Drill that into your brain. So we're given our data. So let's do our overall rate loss. So R equals the rate constant times reactant A raised to M times the concentration of reactant B raised to N, unless you're using X and Y, whatever, what, you know, whatever your book says, your professor says. It doesn't really matter what you call those, as long, long as you don't call them A and B, right? <laughs> well, we know what M is. M is equal to 1. It's first order with respect to A. So we'll just write a 1 in there. Remember, these are going to be, at this level, they're going to be integers every time. Uh, and we know the order with respect to B is 0, so N is equal to 0, right? So anything raised to the zeroth power is just one, correct? So we can simplify this down where the rate law is the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of species A, whatever units those are. And we're not going to, if it's raised to the power of one, just that's assumed. If there's nothing here, just assume it's a one. And like I said, B to the zero would just be one. So that collapses down. So R equals K times the concentration of A. So we, now that we know that, we can know what we're mostly interested in. There's two things. What's the rate constant and what's the overall uh, reaction order? If I say reaction order, that's always going to be for the overall reaction. If I'm interested in just one of the reactants, I'll say that order with respect to A or respect to B. So we just take M and N and add them together. That's the overall reaction order. Since M was equal to 1, first order in A, and N is equal to 0, 0th order in B, 1 plus 0, last time I checked, is 1. So we call that a first order reaction. We're going to find later on that 
we can get a lot of stuff from that. We can get the units of the rate constant, half-lives. I mean, we can we can do all the stuff we're going to do when we get into uh, some really heavy videos on integrated rate equations. Uh, so we're really after, is that a first-order reaction? Is that a second-order reaction? Is that a zero-order reaction? That's pretty much what we're going to do our main focus on. But it could be third-order, something like that. But we're going to spend our time on zero first and second-order reactions at least at the general chemistry level with kinetics you can get crazier later on in graduate school if you want or maybe pchem physical chemistry or something like that but i remember some of the crazy stuff in grad school a whole class on just kinetics i was like Arr! boards worth of stuff you're like well i thought general chemistry was tough not anymore right when you go to grad school you'll see how easy this is this is just an appetizer <laughs> to the stuff you're going to get later on all right so one more board and we'll finish this up this will just be a quick video all right, to finish this off, let's do, you know, kind of a, what are we going to use with this? How do we determine it, et cetera, et cetera. So if we have some generic rate law, right? Once we determine M and N, experimentally, of course, right? Once we know that and we have the rate law, pretty much our main focus at that point is go, what's the rate constant K? We're after that rate constant K for that particular uh, reaction at that time. We're not going to worry about temperature dependence of that just yet, <laughs> right? We, it's complicated enough at this point. So typically, once we know M and N, our next goal is to determine K. Of course, we could be in lab. We can measure concentrations, right? Um, you know, initially is easy. We can measure reaction rates. If we know M and N, we know A, B, M, N, and R. Pretty easy just to use some math and solve for K. Units get pretty crazy, right? Because each reaction order for zero order, second order, first order has different uh, units for K. And that's something we're gonna use later on down the road, kind of as a quick way to determine what the reaction order is, is look at, if you know the rate constant, look at the units of the rate constant. We're gonna find out that that's kind of a shortcut to go, oh, that's a first order reaction because all first order reaction has those kinds of units on the rate constant. Second order have these kind of units on the rate constant, zero order, right? So it's kind of cool. We'll figure all that out stuff later when we get to more complicated videos, right? Well, what if we know K, right? That's a driving force, like I said, for some research groups. What is the rate constant for that reaction? Once that's determined, well, now we, we've got the full meal deal. If we know what the rate constant is and we know what M and N are, Right? We just got an equation here, right? So if we know what A and B are, we can calculate the reaction rate at any point along that reaction, right? Or if we know the rate and the concentration of A, we'll know the concentration of B at that time. It's just math, right? You'll know all of them except one, and you just solve for that one. It's a beautiful thing. Once you have that rate law down and the rate constant, you're rocking and rolling, baby. It's fun stuff. What we're interested in right now is how do we determine that rate law? How do we determine M and N experimentally, right? Uh, and then how do we util utilize all this to get reaction orders, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be doing in the next video the method of initial rates specifically to get M and N, right? And then we can get K from that. And then we're going to delve in. I'm just giving you where our pathway is going, method of initial rates. And then we'll look at integrated rate laws or integrated rate equations for specifically zero, first, and second order reactions and how we can work forwards and backwards uh, with those to determine particular pieces of information we're interested in. Welcome to rate laws. Let's get into the method of initial rates next to be able to determine those exponents M and N. We'll see you in a little bit.